led our show today, uh, head coach Urban Meyer, uh, of course under scrutiny right now, denying just a little bit ago, uh, actually last week specifically, that he had any knowledge of domestic abuse of, uh, allegations regarding receivers coach Zach Smith. This just in though, Ohio State has placed Urban Meyer on paid administrative leave. Ryan Day right now will be the acting head coach during the investigation. Ryan Day currently the co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach for the Ohio State Buckeyes. The difference there is when he goes from saying, I know nothing to all of a sudden um, being placed on administrative leave. Does that tell you that Ohio State is quote unquote believing what the ex-wife is saying? Because it seems like it's an awfully quick jump to, to put him on the sidelines right now. Well, this is, this is my judgment of the situation, Sage, and I don't have any inside information that would make this absolute fact, but my immediate reaction when I hear he's been placed on administrative leave is that they're negotiating the details of separation. I mean, that's what you think, isn't it? I mean, they, you know, Urban, in his statement I read a few moments ago, said he was forward to the resolution of this matter. Uh, my guess is they are negotiating. Now, do I know that for a fact? No, but typically I, I think in most businesses that's the way this is handled. You place unpaid administrative leave, that's usually code for we're, we're working out how we're going to end this. Now, uh, you know, that may prove not to be the case. That certainly is the way it appears to me. I don't know that there's a bigger name in college football than Urban Meyer. He's one of the, mo the, one of the highest compensated coaches in college football, Trevor, he's been placed on paid administrative leave. And your reaction to that news is what? Kevin, this is an existential threat to Urban Meyer's career, his reputation, and his legacy. And the fact that he's been put on paid administrative leave, even though that probably is good for the players as they start camp, creates the perception that there is something there. Now, there's a lot still to unpack. There are a lot of facts we still need to know. We still haven't heard his side of the story as of today. But right now, it looks really bad for Urban Meyer. We're seeing some of it unfold right here, Trevor. What is Ohio State University's responsibility based on the facts they have right now? I think there are two things, especially in light of Baylor, where you have a, a football coach and a football program that suppressed information that women, their co-eds, were sexually assaulted. Here you have a similar thing on the surface where you've got a football coach that is accused of suppressing domestic violence against a woman. From the standpoint of the university, they do not want to be painted with that brush. At the same time, there are legal issues as well. Is Title IX a factor here? And it may very well be a factor. Now we're getting into legal ramifications. So right now the, the exposure of Urban Meyer is pretty strong if the accusations are true. What is your first reaction upon hearing this news today? Well, I, I'm literally uh, stunned, Sage, to be honest with you. I, I along with David Pollack and, and several others, have, here at ESPN, just landed here in Atlanta, coming from Bristol. And I mean, not surprised to see Ohio State move swiftly in a situation that is this serious. Uh, I think it was the correct move by Ohio State. I think it was the correct move to name Ryan Day, the interim, as compared to, say, a Kevin Wilson, who's the offensive coordinator, or Greg Shiano, who's the defensive coordinator. This makes sense to me that they would go in this direction. But for them to move as swiftly as they did proves that they have information that clearly incriminates Urban Meyer much deeper than we might have originally thought. It's obviously a very scary story, but knowing the turbulence of today's events, uh, I'm not surprised to see Ohio State distance themselves quickly. How does the university undertake an investigation like this? Well, Kevin, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered, and there's a lot of people that need to be talked to. You know, the report earlier today you know, mentioned all these text messages from coaches' wives who are still on the staff. So Ohio State has to talk to all those people to find out what they knew, and maybe more importantly, when they knew it and what they did about it. You know, Urban Meyer, when did he know about these allegations? Did he know about the allegations in 2015, which he so forcefully denied last week at Big Ten Media Day? And then what was the response after people did know? You know both Urban Meyer and his wife, Shelly Meyer, are now Ohio State employees. So there could be some Title IX responsibilities that they had to fulfill once they learned of these allegations, if they did, in fact, learn of them in 2015. So there's a lot to verify if you're Ohio State 
because uh, you know these allegations don't just involve one coach and one coach's family, but pretty much the entire football department, which is a big one at Ohio State. Now, what was your reaction when, when you learned of this news? The same thing everybody else's was at ESPN because we were all in meetings, you know, as a college football unit. We're all meeting about the next season, and the next thing you know, that news breaks, and all of our mouths kind of hit the floor and just said, oh, my goodness, you know, because we're sitting there talking about this next season and who are locks to have great seasons in Ohio. It was one of those teams, and now you go, wait a minute, we're going to have to rethink this because of what happened, and obviously the news coming out is not going to be good for Urban Meyer. It's not going to end well for him in any way, shape, or form. What do you mean by that, David? I don't think he's going to beat Ohio State anymore. That's what I mean by that. I think this is enough to – yeah, Jim Trestle was there and had some stuff with uh, – obviously we talked about it in the past with tattoos and illegal benefits and stuff like that. And this is far more serious. And the reports are showing that. And Jim Trestle was a winning coach. He won a national championship. He won 10 games a year. Uh, won 12 games, I think, his last season there at Ohio State. And this is definitely one of those things where it's enough – if this is if this, this is true, which it appears to be true so far – I don't think Urban Meyer can survive. How surprised would you be if this plays out and Urban Meyer remains head coach based on these serious allegations? Um, at this point, I'd be surprised. I would say that uh, you know when when this first started to surface, uh, my first thought was um, they will figure out a way uh, to keep Urban Meyer in place and keep him as a head football coach, simply because uh, we've seen before that football is a huge animal and, and a lot of times uh, winning cures a lot of uh, bad things that go on. Uh, this one uh, seems to be getting too big to, to cure at this point. So I'd be extremely surprised if, uh, if he survives this.